My name is Adrian Kantharubin. I'm part of the solutions team here at Synology UK and together with uh, First Contact, we're going to be going through unveiling the power of Synology solutions in the 4K era. So uh, without further ado, um, First Contact, Jeremy and Xander Ross. So this is just a sort of a brief overview of, of stuff and of course uh, they'll be able to explain First Contact a lot better than I would. I just wanted to highlight uh, one of their testimonials, which is knowledgeable, professional, and very easy to talk to, uh, which you'll find sort of <laughs> in abundant as we as we go through our webinar. And uh, being so, Xander's the media specialist, and Jeremy's got that IT background. You'll find that together they provide a perfect overview for our topic today. So uh, if you guys just want to <laughs> add a little bit more. Hi, I'm Jeremy. Uh, I'm the, uh, the owner of First Contact. We've been uh, involved with Synology Solutions for about 20 years now. Um, everything from NASs to routers. Um, and uh, um, what we realised over the last couple of years was that um, we're starting to come across a number of challenges when dealing with data storage in the media. Mm. Yeah, so I'm Xander. Uh, I work part time as the media specialist here at First Contact. Uh, the rest of the time, I'm still out there uh, creating content for clients and shooting short films, working on features. So the advantage to that is that I'm able to still come in and oh, hold on. Sorry, I'm just hearing that we've got some issues with our mic. Let me switch across to a different one. <coughs> That way uh, you guys can hear us better. Uh, is that better? Yeah, I mean, I can hear you fine, perfectly on my end. It's we um, can it right now. It's it's coming across a little tinny, but it's it's okay, Zan. Just sort of continue. the The session's recorded, and anyone who sort of misses it can always review it at the end as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Apologies for that. Um, so right. as I was saying, I'm the part. I work part time for media specialist if the first contact. Uh, the rest of the time, I'm still out there producing content for clients and working in industry on short films and feature films. With the advantage to that being that rather than sitting here in an office all day talking to clients about what they need for media management and data management in industry, I'm able to keep on top of that because I'm out there working as well, the same as all of you guys. Um, so really, I think the, the big thing that beyond that side thing that I come in for is, as we've described it, I'm basically the translator between IT speak and media speak. So we found that kind of a lot of IT guys can know all the information on your bandwidth and your router and your data management, but the media people uh, maybe don't understand that side and vice versa. A lot of the IT guys often don't understand kind of the bit rate and color information. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, perfect. Um, so yeah, let's just get into it. Um, so starting question for sort of, I'm guessing everyone here is sort of involved, but if they're not, what exactly is that the media production workflow? Where would, where would you find someone who calls you and says, oh, we need help? So I think for us, it can vary depending on what sort of size media production we're talking about because obviously it can vary a lot. Um, I know that's kind of a, a bit of a signature thing of, you know, it does come down to it depends on the client, which is sort of the ethos of us. And I think it's also the ethos of you guys at Synology. Um, and basically it comes down to the fact that whether you're talking, say just someone that does a lot of blogging or social media posts, where they're just shooting it all on their phone and uploading it that way, or whether you're talking like a full crew of 20, 30 people shooting a feature film for a high end production, you're still going to have the same sort of problems and the same general steps of you start by outlining your general ideas, you shoot your content, you send it across to your editor or your editing machine, and then you upload it. Yeah. But often what's ha what happens is within that, you've got a lot of um, breakpoints and weaknesses where data can get lost, Data can get corrupted, drives can be destroyed, um, or even just drives can be lost or stolen. Yeah, um, especially on these sort of bigger projects where you know you've got very expensive equipment. Uh, you don't want to be risking 
thousands of pounds worth of um, footage. Mm. Yeah. I, I think it's also fair to say as well, it's not just about uh, large productions. Um, it can be uh, anything from you know, one-man bands or, or even uh, photographers as yeah. well, event photography, commercial photography. Um, at the end of the day, the, the concept, the problems are all much the same. Uh, the solution very much depends on um, kind of the size of the operation and, and what really each person needs. Um, and, and the beauty of what we love about the technology products is that it's so flexible um, that we can take that kind of bespoke approach when talking to a client. Perfect. Yeah, that's and that actually very neatly brings me to my next point, which is uh, when you're looking at the workflow, the key challenges you're facing are quite universal, but each person, it will be, we're trying to find like sort of a tailor-made solution for each one. So uh, with that in mind, uh, what are, so let's, let's take it even a little bit more broader. What are the sort of the key challenges uh, that they would face regardless of if they're big, small, whatever? Well, I think to clarify on that, we'll, we'll use an example of a client we spoke to recently about this. Because uh, we find that's much easier than just speaking the yeah. hypothetical. Mm -hmm. um, so they were regularly shooting on Ursa 4.6Ks. Um, they were shooting in RAW, but they occasionally shoot in ProRes, which meant that they were still dealing with fairly large file sizes. Um, they often had kind of remote editors that they were working with, but generally it was all being edited on one site. So for them, I believe we were looking at it as they were going to have one NAS on site that they offload their footage onto and all their editors work from because using kind of a 10 gig switch, they're able to have all their data stored locally where all their editors can access it at the same time. It's not going to be compressed like with a lot of other solutions. And they're able to then remotely send that footage across to freelance editors they work with using the web portal for Synology Drive. The other big advantage that uh, kind of you thought of, which I um, kind of hadn't thought of as sort of media specialist, was that using the Synology um, NAS drive, we can even back up their full machines. Yeah. Um, so using things like Active Backup for Business, which is an app that's included uh, with many of the uh, of the NASs, um, we're able to make sure that business critical machines uh, can be constantly uh, backed up. Uh, doing a, a full metal backup. So if you have to restore your machine if it corrupts, you've got all your config, you've got all your settings, you've got all your software. Not it's just not that, you know, uh, us, kind of any editor will know it takes you hours and hours to config your machine and install all the plugins properly. Um, you know, and everyone's gone through that pain, I imagine, at one point of your computer's died, you've had to get a new one, and you've got to spend the better part of a week probably getting it set up just right again. The advantage this is, you know, if your computer dies, if your laptop dies, um, you're able to get it sorted. And that's I just, think. yeah, I was going to say that's Sorry, just control. one, yeah, that's, yeah. Right. that's just one problem sort of that, uh, what is it, anyone who's involved in data will be facing, you know, because uh, uh, what I find from sort of, uh, Sandy, you may, you may be able to test this in sort of a digital production environment, all the way from getting that footage to storing it from the start, then editing, and then moving or archiving it. There's different problems all the way going through. A universal one is just backing up that data, is just making sure that data is secure. And you know, if you're working on it live, then you need to be able to retrieve it fast. Yeah. Absolutely, Adrian. Uh, you know, you've, you've hit the nail on the head, and it's uh, whether you're in media production or any other business, at the end of the day, data storage. Um, is the first and most basic uh, challenge that everybody has. Um, and, and of course, you, you said it right, uh, you know, backing up that data properly as well. Um, and then from there, it goes into the very specific problems of uh, the different stages of the workflow. Yeah, so one of the kind of first questions we'd ask any client when we're bringing them on board is the question of, okay, well, how do you work? What's your workflow look like? What programs do you edit on? What cameras do you shoot on? Are you going to be looking at upgrading any of that in the near future? Because, you know, while you may be shooting, say, 4K footage now in AVC or MOV files, six months, 12 months down the line, are you going to be upgrading to 8K, shooting in RAW, shooting in ProRes? All of that is going to affect 
not just the data that you need now, but also how much projected data you're going to be creating in the near future. Yeah, so that, yeah, that perfectly brings me up to the next thing, which is what is the current method? You know, what if, what, so like the web, yeah. <laughs> the title of the webinar is it's, we're living in a sort of a 4K world. Uh, things were, are getting bigger and bigger. Uh, 4K was, uh, I, I wouldn't say unprecedented, but the speed of how we've gone from 4K to 8K to, uh, I mean, are we getting higher than 8K? I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, we've got 17K <laughs> coming out later this year. Um, <laughs> we, we've got plans once that's out to stress test one of the NAS drives with that, because uh, as we said, we're big believers in, we don't want to just be telling you that this works. We want to be able to hand you evidence before we even speak to a client that, yeah, this has been tested with exactly what your workflow is going to be. It's going to definitely work for you. Um, in terms of the current methods, uh, I'm ashamed to say, as someone that used to do this myself, yeah, um, yeah. a lot of it's just stored on a load of um, external hard drives, external SSDs, mm -hmm. and maybe sent across using platforms like WeTransfer, yeah. OneDrive, Google Drive, uh, which obviously it's better than nothing. Um, but the big problem that we found through speaking to a load of these people is that unfortunately those drives can get lost, those drives can get stolen. If you then need to pull it back from a cloud service, often you're then talking hours and hours and hours, if not days or weeks, depending on how large your file is. Um, but also it's a case of it's not all in one place. So when you do need to come back and you know, oh, I need to pull footage from a job I did seven months ago, you've got to rummage around your drawer, try and find the exact hard drive that had it, hope that the port on it hasn't broken. And that you haven't overwritten it. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, and, and by using data file management through NAS, um, you can organize everything very well. And this is something that we help clients think about when we're designing the solution. One of the things we sit down with them and we talk about file structures. Uh, yeah. We talk about how do they currently structure their files, how do they store their files, and how can we yeah. move that across. In a lot of cases, we try and replicate that rather than having to force somebody into a new way of doing things. Um, but uh, I think you also uh, discovered, speak to another client recently, that they were uploading a lot of their, um, their archive footage or, or their editing footage onto the cloud and the particular platform they were using uh, was compressing it. Uh, all, pretty much all cloud platforms from what I've seen of compressed, depending on what sort of data you're uploading. Um, but most of the time, yeah, it's compressing your data in order to be able to store it on their end, which means that when you need to come back and restore it or you're sending it to an editor or something, you're losing quality, which obviously, you know, is making your work look worse than it is. It's making their work look worse than it is. Is not showing it its virtuous potential. There, there is another issue as well. Um, a lot of people um, kind of assume that well, I'm I'm backing my data up to the cloud, and actually, uh, you're synchronizing your files to the cloud. And what then happen can happen is if you're unlucky enough for your uh, your computer to get uh, hit by ransomware, it's going to encrypt the files in your cloud storage as well as the files on your on your computer. It's not just that, you know, if you work with with uh, kind of your editing programs or even and the project file corrupts or even, you know, you just simply simply delete some files because you didn't think you needed them anymore and need to restore it. I've been there. I've done that. Um, you've lost it for good. Whereas uh, you can set up your NAS drive to version your backups, meaning, you know, oh, I accidentally deleted all this footage that I thought we'd gotten rid of, thought we didn't need any more, but we now need to re-edit that, we need to pull it back. Log on, go on the version backup. That happened to you just last week. Yeah, uh, and I think the, the best way we described it that I think the NAS has sort of fixed is it stops that sense of waking up at 2 a.m. with a cold sweat of, Oh my God, have I lost data that a client's going to come back and ask for? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, as we go through sort of the current methods in the media space, we are just uncovering all of the problems that are associated with what would happen normally. 
Uh, hence why we need sort of a tailor-made solution to the problems. Because yeah. again, it can go from one-man band like wedding photographers all the way up to, to giant um, sort of shooting in the desert in one country, then editing in another. So yeah, yeah. yeah. going by that, going from that, um, how you know, would... Yeah, go on. I was just going to say, it's funny you say that because we did actually speak to uh, someone else recently who mm -hmm. does that level of production and they're telling me that when COVID hit, they had a massive problem because the way that they traditionally had sent across footage was they physically shipped drives across and they had someone physically hand it over one to the other and they didn't have this sort of cloud platform in place. Yeah, and that might have even been faster than, you know, sending it you know, directly, you know, even though that doesn't make a lot of sense, but still, <laughs> that's sort of the world we're living in. So, yep. yeah, going by this, going by all the problems and the, the current method we've gone through, how would you sort of spec out a Synology kit for, and let's, uh, we'll try and keep this sort of narrower. Um, if we were in a sort of a heavy editing environment, shooting in one, one place, then transferring over and editing in one, in another place. Um, well, I, I think, um, I, again, we start looking at storage. Uh, storage is key. You don't want to run out of space uh, because you're shooting more uh, than you think, than you anticipate. You know, at the end of the day, like you say, whether it's uh, whether it's uh, you know, a, a video production or whether it's photography, you're always going to shoot far more than you end up using. So mm. you've got that choice, which is the best shot, et cetera. Um, see, I know something about it. Uh, um, but um, from there, once you've sorted out the storage, again, we consider backups. But then how we, we have to consider how do we uh, solve the issue of data access remotely if it's not in the cloud? And the beauty of um, all of the, the NASs uh, that Synology provide is that it's kind of like running your own cloud. Um, you have the advantage of having that on-premise box that you control you own your data um, and you can choose who has access to what. But at the same time, um, you can you can set cloud access to it. So there are a number of ways that, that it can be done. Um, if it's a remote editor, they could have another NAS at their end and we can use something like um, hybrid cloud folders um, so that they can synchronize between the two NASs from site to site in real time. We've got a client that actually does yep. that um, because, again, that, that sort of thing where they'd only need that if they've got an editor they're working with regularly that's at a different location. Uh, obviously, if you don't need that, if you don't have someone that you're working with regularly, you wouldn't need to get a second NAS for them. You know, we, we have some where I've done jobs with editors where I work with a variety of different freelance editors. So the easiest thing for me is to go in and just give them remote access to individual folders because for the price of it, it's not worth getting them a NAS for the one job. What we've even done as well, rather than that remote editor just downloading the files they need to work on locally, um, we take it a step further and we recommend using something like Synology Drive. So yeah. we would help that editor set that up so that once they've downloaded those files and they're working locally on their machine, those files are then synchronizing constantly or backing up to uh to the main NAS so that if something happens to the work while they're working on it even even though we know the original files are still on the NAS um it could save a lot of time uh you know if you're on a deadline and their machine corrupts or the files corrupt we can still restore those from the NAS because of something like Synology Drive. I think the other big bit that we talk to whenever we uh, spec out a machine for a client is always the idea of future proofing. So, you know, it may be, yeah, absolutely, you only have kind of 20 terabytes now, but in five years' time, you're probably going to, you're potentially going to be doubling, tripling that in the amount of data you're producing. So, we may go, okay, let's put you in, say, a six bay machine with 20 terabytes now, and you can then add more drives in in the future. And I think something that's quite fantastic about that is the fact that you're not needing to pay this really high premium every month to be able to mm. access your data as it expands. Once you've paid it, it's done. It's yours. You can go home. If you really hate us for some reason, you can never speak to us again. Obviously, we'll be heartbroken. 
but you're allowed to. And I think that's the beauty of it. It's the fact that you own your data. And it, it's supported by so many professionals in, uh, in the industry as well. It's technology themselves. Yeah, absolutely. But more importantly, Sandra, as well, when we're specking up a system, when you're talking about future proofing, we're talking about starting with the storage capacity they need now, but having those bays empty, ready for future drives to be added. The beauty of that is that you don't need to find the budget for all the drives you need now. Uh, you know, you, you, yeah. you, you, we can set the system up with what you need for now in the next year or so, and you can add drives as you need to further down the line. And the best part about that is, in my experience, what you might pay for a, a, a you know an eight, 16, 20 terabyte drive today, when you need to add another one in a year or two's time, because new bigger drives have come out, those prices fall. So it's not just saving you having to lay out for it now, but it's actually saving you money further down the line. And on top of that, there's even, um, I know we can offer, I imagine there's potentially others as well, but we for sure definitely can. We can offer financing on NAS drives when you purchase it from us. So you don't even need to find all that funding up front immediately. Mm. You can spread it across so that, you know, oh, hey, you know, maybe we've not got however much it is now, but I know I've got this much coming in every month from clients we're working with. So we can spread it out over the cost of the year. Yeah, and that's really where it shows sort of uh, first contacts expertise in that fact that like we're just looking at scalability right now. We haven't even sort of got into the into the the granular details of you know networking or performance, um, yeah. especially in in the media space where you can sort of flip between the both. If it's high performance, if it needs to be something live, and you need all that data retrieved fast so that a lot of people can edit off of. Also, or you might also need that as well as like some place to archive all that storage. So it it is it does flip it does flip between the two. Because uh, I did uh, what is it as we're all <laughs> we're all sharing war stories here. I did uh, what is it spec out one for um, for an end user a while back where essentially what they wanted was live uh, storage for the editors, but then also in the same unit to then archive that data back so they can have multiple projects archived but then one project always ongoing so we went with a flash station with a expansion unit so flash station and then have that expansion unit with just hard drives so going flipping between the two and it was all just in one unit and they found it perfect so yeah. again that that's just one use case and again we're only looking at a very uh, at a very uh, surface level when we can get even deeper, but if we get deeper, then I believe this webinar will go on <laughs> for hours and hours. Absolutely. <laughs> we, so, we can certainly talk about Synology Kit for days. Well, I think we, so we actually cool. have, you know, I think you worked out the other day, you've been selling Synology Kit for what, nearly 20 years now? Something like that, yeah. Um, <laughs> and we realized not only is that kind of a, you know, humble brag for us in the fact that we've been working with you guys so long, it's also a testament to you guys at Synology and the equipment and why we're so confident yeah. in selling it. As much as, you know, you can go to NAB and, oh, look, there's this brand new system that's come out that says it can do X, Y, and Z. 90% of the time we've looked at it and gone, that's nice, but that's basically something Synology's already had for the past five years. Yeah. It's also a case of we're looking at it and going, that's great, but I don't want to be spending hundreds or thousands of pounds on a system where two years down the road, I need to go back to them for support because something gone wrong. Because let's be honest, it's tech. It always goes yeah. wrong at some point. I'm a believer and it's not about... Thank never... goodness or we'd be out of work, but yes. <laughs> so, I'm a believer and it's not about if it goes wrong, it's about how it's handled when it does. Yeah. And fortunately, what we found is with Synology, you can rely that on the fact that 10, 20 years from now, you guys are still going to be out there selling NAS drives. We can still go back if you need to upgrade or if you've had a problem with an old one, and you're still going to provide that same fantastic support and products. You know, in my experience, it goes even further than that. Uh, you know, we've got clients who are probably on their third generation of, uh, of Synology products or, or beyond. Um, but we always find, um, I think it's safe to say, they outgrow the product rather than the product mm. dies. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of that reliability and robustness of, of the equipment that we really, really love. But more importantly, uh, and what we found, and we, you know, being a, a, an IT company, uh, not, not just Synology spokespeople, 
Um, but being an IT company, we've come across and had the experience of dealing with multiple different um, NAS manufacturers and vendors. Um, but what we found that really, really um, makes me sleep better at night is the level of security that's available uh, on Synology products. Um, we, we found other competing brands really kind of caught with their pants down with vulnerabilities and things like that. Whereas we, we find with Synology, you guys always seem to be ahead of the curve, uh, you know, cutting edge when it comes to um, blocking exploits and vulnerabilities so that the, the kit is safe and secure and people's data is secure. Well, I think and that's, that's really important. That's also the other advantage of, you know, owning an ads at South, of the fact that it's not on some big, massive server farm somewhere that, you know, if it's being hacked because they're targeting that company, all your data's gone along with millions of others. It's on your premises. Yeah. It's much less likely to even be seen as something that's worth attacking. Exactly. Yeah. And again, this is just because uh, I feel like um, when we're talking about uh, Synology kits, where, I mean, Xander, you're mentioning the desktop, but then also if we're in a, in a server or in a data farm, then we're going with a rack station. There are so many yeah. sort of avenues to follow down. I think we may have answered the next question already. <laughs> <laughs> what are the, some of the best applications to use in this space? Um, uh, Jeremy, you brought up many times uh, Synology Drive. And yeah. for um, editors who sort of live, breathe editing, they don't want to concern themselves with anything other than a file explorer or or, or something just to view their, their files. So Synology Drive, perfect to sort of yeah. let them um, let them play around with. Uh, is there anything that I, I would be missing in terms of applications that we'd use yeah, it in this space? Just, well, adding on to that, of the fact that yeah. what we found is, you know, the beauty of a NAS drive in general is that you don't need any plugins. Mm. You don't need any additional software. Absolutely, stuff like Synology Drive improves it, but you can just plug that in and it reads it as a local drive on your machine. So it doesn't matter if you're editing on Premiere, Avid, After Effects, Logic, DaVinci, you're able to read that at full speed, zero compression. You're not having to worry about plugins. You're not having to worry about internet access. Yeah. And so it means you're not having to go, oh, unfortunately, I'm really sorry, but we can't edit anything because there's just been a new update rolled out and it's crashed all the third party plugins so we can't access any of our data. Um, although saying that, there's a number of third party products that uh, are certified for use with Synology uh, that you can download and install yeah. directly from within uh, the, the DSM, the, the Synology operating system, uh, that worked very well. I mean, for instance, if you were a, um, a content creator and like you say, filming on your phone, uh, I'd be recommending Synology Photos uh, to automatically back up to your NAS wherever you are in the world. Um, if you're, uh, you know, we've talked about Synology Drive, we've talked about active backup for business for uh, making sure that your editing rig is constantly backed up itself. Um, there are, I mean, the list goes on. We've even had scenarios where um, a media production company wanted to have um, something that they could a little bit more um, easily um, show the, the the finished product to clients who are coming in to the studio. Um, and we've used things like DS Video as well, which is another Synology app, or even third-party apps like Plex as well, so they can show their entire media library that way. The, the list goes on, Adrian, and that, yeah. again, um, there's just so many different applications out there that can apply for different scenarios. Yeah, it really just comes down to it depends on. It does. The it does. I know that's one of your favorites. Yeah. You know, what, adding <laughs> up to that, one that I've been using as well recently that I think is a bit of a unsung hero of a lot of the Synology stuff is Synology Office. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of the time as well, when you have any sort of production meeting, you're working with uh, collaborators here, there, and everywhere. Rather than sending files across, constantly, I can just send them a remote link to the document I've created on my NAS. I'm not having to deal with, you know, 57 other different softwares. It's all in one. And the beauty of that as well is it's all local to my machine as well. Perfect. So now it kind of comes to sort of our, our final couple of questions, but uh, this is the main one. And 
Uh, Xander, you did you did <laughs> mention it already. Uh, but how exactly did uh, first contact and Synology meet? Sort of what sort of made you go with Synology as 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 your guys? So going back about twenty years, um, we had a client who we started very small. Um, it was a um, they were a one man band and they were expanding uh, to two or three members of staff. Um, so instead of just having all their files on their one computer, they came to us and said, you know, how do we share our our files? We want to be able to you know, save and open all, all the files together. Um, and it was a very simple solution back then. Um, we'd had some experience with network attached storage prior to that uh, with a couple of the brands that I'm certainly not going to mention, um, but been very let down. Um, you know, those systems had crashed. Um, it was a very, very difficult scenario of trying to retrieve the data for those clients from those systems. Um, one of my engineers had done some some reading, and he said, "Oh, there's this you know new upcoming company called Synology. We should really look at it." We gave it a try. Uh, we put in uh, a, a our first two bay NAS for that that client. Um, I think they finally retired it when um, it could no longer get any uh, firmware updates through DSM after about ten or twelve years, um, and um, we haven't looked back since, uh, you know, and, and now we're putting in rack stations, uh, multi-bay NAS is. Uh, we're even using the routers, um, which as mesh uh, Wi-Fi networks are absolutely fantastic as well. Um, and, uh, and and that's that was that's really our the first contact synergy secret origin story. <laughs> Perfect. Then uh, this sort of just uh, leads me into. Um... Uh, something from First Contact itself, uh, sitting right next to, to Xander, yes. uh, I believe is is the black box. And uh, I actually have uh, was it the, the video, the demonstration, but I thought maybe you wanted to sort of set it up and then I'll just play the, the video and you can tell yeah, me if you so want to pause it or anything like that. Basically, um, we discovered kind of when I was shooting on set um, a year or two ago that I ran into what I imagine every uh, one that creates content on set and spends a lot of money on creating it, that you have this anxiety of, oh my God, what if the data corrupts between wrapping production and getting home? You know, it's all well and good that I want that I can copy it across to a drive on a laptop on set. I don't trust that. I've seen hard drives corrupt far too many times to trust it. And so I kind of, well, how feasible would it be to kind of, you know, get a spare NAS, plug it in on set and bring it with? And then we, we, we started talking about the logistics of how you protect that NAS in transport. Um, and then kind of the discussion evolved, well, hang on, what if we could make this a portable solution uh, so the NAS is protected in, uh, you know, a... It's uh, IP67 rated military, military grade, grade. Rigid eyes mm -hmm. case with... Polycarbonate. Yeah, fire retardant foam. Uh, the case is waterproof, you know, it floats if need be. Not that we recommend anyone trying. Uh, I think short of running it over with a tank, uh, which I only say because I've not been given the marketing budget to test that yet, it, you should be fine. Um, so the beauty of this solution is it gives you your kind of mini um, version of your network storage on on site, whether you're uh, in a studio that you're renting somewhere uh, somewhere else, or in the middle of the desert, the jungle, the you know anywhere, as long as you've got power, yeah. um, it's fine because we've got a router built into it, so it's got its own network connection. You don't need internet yeah. to back it up. Yeah. And the beauty think, of it is, yeah, I think it'll be easier to to show it now yeah, because that's true. That's true. <laughs> we're painting a great picture. Choice. Um, and again, just wanted to iterate that this is a very specialized solution. Like you said, yep. this is uh, targeting sort of a, a specific problem in the media space. And yep. I think it's pretty good. Uh, next. All right. So go ahead and pause it when it comes to. Right. So very easy to plug in your, your drive that you've just, you've just shot from. Yeah. Um, and then you can just log on to the NAS uh, through the included Wi-Fi router, 
whether it's on your phone, your tablet, your laptop, um, and you can um, log in and just start copying the data. Um, and the beauty is as well, you can see the NAS in this case is a four bay. Um, so we would always recommend that there's at least two drives in there uh, running Synology hybrid rates that are mirrored. So even if you've backed up onto your NAS and the drive fails, you're still protected. But not just yeah. that, we, we use enterprise grade uh, SSDs in there. So there's no moving parts to get knocked or damaged. And also they're less likely to fail because they're much higher quality drives. Hmm. So if the, they didn't have the black box, what would they be doing normally? Traditionally, uh, for most of the people we've spoken to, and I even spoke to a media production company about this yesterday morning, uh, who was on set in a studio uh, filming, they'd take it off their hard drive on the camera and they'd plug mm -hmm. it in directly uh, to a laptop and copy it across to an external drive or upload it to a cloud service. Right. Um, and what we found is there's a lot of ways that that can very easily go wrong. Um, the, the big bit is, I think, like we said, it's letting you know that no matter what happens, your data is going to be safe. You know, it's all well and good kind of spending thousands of, on a production and, you know, you hire the top A-list talent, you're working with 50 grand cinema cameras. You don't want to then be going, oh, I'm really sorry. I know we spent all this money on it, but I cheaped out on the drives. and uh, Now we've got to go back and reshoot it. That isn't just going to cost you money. That's also going to cost you your reputation. Exactly. Perfect. That sounds. I mean, uh, I'm sure uh, when people contact you about the black box, hopefully after this webinar, you'll be able to tell them a lot more about it. Uh, but that is unfortunately the end. <laughs> so thank you everyone for, for joining us on this webinar today.